For many years, Donkey Kong as a character was relegated to just being the big monkey on the top of the tower throwing down barrels at Mario. But the Donkey Kong character was still immensely popular. The original arcade Donkey Kong took the world by storm at one point. Mario as a character wouldn't exist at all without Donkey Kong. In the 80s, Nintendo decided that they would kind of get rid of Donkey Kong and give Mario his own series of platforming games. It wouldn't be until nearly 10 years of Mario having his own games that they would finally go the other way around and make a fully-fledged Donkey Kong platformer game without Mario. The game would be called Donkey Kong Country, developed by Rare, a game company that at the time was relatively no-name in comparison to what they would become. The game released in North America on November 21st, 1994 to very good reviews from critics and consumers alike, and it still has quite a cult fanbase today despite a new Donkey Kong game not being released in the past nine years. Now, me personally, I don't think I've ever played Donkey Kong Country, at least any time recently. I think I might have played the first level or two many years ago when I was around six or seven years old, but I don't really remember it. The closest thing I've really had to playing the game was really just watching Let's Plays, specifically Steven Plays, and playing Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy. But now, nearly 30 years after the initial release of the game, I'm finally checking it out. Let's talk about the story. Well, the story is pretty basic, but that's not the main reason why people love this game. King K. Roll, an anthropomorphic crocodile, steals Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong's bananas, and the DKs go on a quest to get them back. That's really it. How I'm going to be talking about the game. I'm structuring this video pretty simply. I'll be talking about each of the worlds more so than each level, but for certain levels that stand out, I'll talk about them more in depth. After talking about all of the worlds, I'll talk about the mechanics and the overall game feel. This video is probably a lot shorter than my typical Mortal Kombat video, but that's because this game is pretty short and I don't have to talk about each character since it's not a fighting game. I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get started with World 1. World 1, Congo Jungle. As an introduction to the game, it brought a good amount of variety to the table without too much variety that makes it lose its identity. I'll talk more about it at the end, but the soundtrack is just incredible. The first stage is just normal, then it's a similar stage but with ropes, then a stage after in a cave, then a water level, then a barrel level. It's all really fun and the variety is pretty great. The barrel level I did have a little bit of trouble on, but I think it's just because I suck ass at the game. The introduction serves the game pretty well though, it's easy but not too easy and shows variety. I don't really like intros in games that are a basic tutorial or that are too easy because it makes it difficult for me to actually grasp the concepts in the game. But when there's a little bit of difficulty and no actual tutorial, it allows me to figure out how to play the game by myself, which lets me learn a lot more efficiently. The boss was a big ass squirrel looking dude. World 2, Monkey Mines. As I'm running this, I'm absolutely fuming because I forgot to click the goddamn record button before playing this goddamn segment. I refuse to go back and play it again. It was so fucking difficult for me, and I'm not going to put myself through that shit again. I had some trouble beforehand, but nothing compares to the goddamn stop and go station. Holy fucking shit, this level was so hard for me. Your timing has to be so perfect, it's absolutely incredible. The level after that wasn't as hard, but it still had some silly moments that I'd love to show you, but unfortunately, I didn't record like a fucking moron. So, the footage you're seeing is just me going back to have some background footage for this segment, not my actual first time playing through. The boss was just a weird-ass bird. World 3, Vine Valley. This world was probably my favorite so far in terms of aesthetics. In terms of gameplay, it's probably up there as well. The gameplay felt varied throughout, where no two stages were the same. That's something I've noticed throughout, where there's just some kind of gimmick for each stage. The rope stage had me timing myself going up and down the rope correctly to avoid enemies as the rope moved, which was a really fun idea. The orangutan gang level was specifically super pretty. Overall, a pretty fun world. The boss was a giant bee, but he wasn't too hard, just really fast moving. World 4, Gorilla Glacier. This world was surprisingly short, and I honestly didn't really like it. The level where you bounce on a whole bunch of tires is cool, and the second level has you in a crystal cave, which looks pretty good. However, I've just never really been that much of a fan of Ice Worlds in general in video games, so I was already biased from the get-go. The water level was pretty cool, though. It's called Croctopus Chase, and it stayed true to its name. The whole time you have to race against octopi that are chasing you down through tight corridors, and you have to go pretty damn fast. I had so many close calls while playing that level. The final boss was extremely underwhelming. It was just the first world boss, except it jumped. Pretty lame. World 5, Prem Croc Industries Incorporated. This world also felt really short. Again, the game never really stops with the creativity. Yeah, there's things that are consistent, like typical platforming levels, water levels, minecart levels, but they all have a special gimmick to them. The first level of each world I've noticed goes with the world theme and is a typical platforming level. Then the developers have fun and creative ideas that they want to show off as the world goes on. The game doesn't really hold your hand, ever. It gets pretty fucking hard at times. I'll admit that I've been using save states, and honestly, without them, I'm not sure how much patience I would have actually had to complete this game. It's pretty damn challenging. However, the minecart level in this world was surprisingly easy. I feel like I had a more rough time on the second one, but, you know. 
The final boss was a giant oil drum that dropped enemies down on top of me. Kinda cool, but also kinda weird. World 6, Chimp Caverns. Eh. Honestly, it's not bad, but when I've been used to playing a game where it feels like there's a new concept every level or at least every other level, when that isn't present at the end it just feels underwhelming. I think it might have been the shortest world in the game other than World 1, so it just feels real underwhelming for a grand finale of the game. The boss was just the bird guy again from the second world, which is pretty disappointing for the penultimate boss of the entire game. Final boss. King K. Rule is the final boss in this game, and it's definitely the best boss in the game by far. He has a variety of attacks, three different stages with three different stages of difficulty for each of those stages. It has a nice little fake credit sequence, which was cute. Honestly, a really good final boss with just enough challenge. Now that I've talked about all the worlds in the final boss, let's talk about some design things. Movement. The movement in this game took a second for me to actually get a hang of. It's very fluid for its time, almost feels kinda slow-mo sometimes when jumping. Real floaty. It feels very good though, just not something I'd expected from a game such as this one that came out 30 years ago. Graphics and sound. The visuals this game has to offer are unparalleled to anything else at the time. The game looks great, it's honestly hard to believe it's a Super Nintendo game. It has a sort of pseudo 3D graphic look that really still looks good today, even though they're just sprites. The aesthetics of this game, my lord, every world, even the ice one, looks really good aesthetically. There are genuinely beautiful stages in this game that look just stunning. The beautiful moments are captured perfectly by the fucking stellar soundtrack. Seriously, the soundtrack in this game I think is my favorite video game soundtrack of all time, only second to Minecraft. David Wise composed this game, and he could fucking bend me down and spread my cheeks open and have his way with me for creating this soundtrack. This soundtrack is varied too, with slow and melodic tracks such as the underwater theme, but also absolute bangers such as the main theme. I really just love the overall visual and auditory aspects of this game. Really something special that has left a huge mark on the gaming industry. Creativity and variety. This game's variety and creativity is amazing for its time. All the different gimmicks in this game make the gameplay refreshing and fun throughout the entirety of it. Paired with the amazing settings, each level feels distinct and different. Characters. Luckily, the end of the game has the characters shown for me, so I'll just play the clip now of me watching the end sequence showing every character. Cast of characters. Alright, this is the real credits, I guess. The bad guys. Naughty. Neki. Army. Zinger. Slippa. Just a snake. Minky Kong. Mini Neki. The Aquatic Bad Guys. Bite Size. Croctopus. Chomps Jr. Chomps. Clambo. Squidge. <laughs> the Kremlings. Critter. Clump. <laughs> Crash. Claptrap. Rock Croc. Crusha. The Bosses. Very naughty. Master Necky. Queen Bee. Really naughty. Dumb Drum. Master Necky Senior. King K. Rule. The good guys. Rambi. Espresso. On guard. Winky. Squawks. The cons. Is it my turn yet? It's Cranky Kong, Funky Kong. Candy Kong. Surely it's me next. Dumbass Cranky Kong. Cranky Kong. Diddy Kong. Donkey Kong. Don't fall, kitty. Yeah, he's hyped. I'm just gonna say it straight up. Donkey Kong Country is an absolutely stellar game, and if you're a fan of platformers or retro games or gaming history, 
This game is an absolute must play. The only two negative things that I'm going to say is that for it being a game marketed towards children, there's no way I would have been able to handle it as a kid. There's some really challenging parts of the game that borderline on unfair. Sometimes the controls can be a little too floaty, but they're not that bad. The last world of the game felt totally unnecessary, it didn't really add anything to the game, just something to fill out runtime at that point. Not that the levels are bad, but like I said when talking about the world earlier in the video, it just feels undercooked in comparison to the others. The bosses do feel a little underwhelming, and the repeated bosses feel kind of lazy when you think about the creativity they had in the general game design of the main levels. Come on, do they really have to reuse two of the bosses? Due to these small things, I can't give the game a 10. Like I said, fucking amazing game and really stellar, and I, I love it, but I can't bring myself to give it anything above a 9. I seriously recommend this game. If you've never played it, do yourself a favor and try it out. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. I promise I'll have more videos as soon as possible. I've been actively working on it very hard. I just have a lot of life stuff that I have to get out of the way as well. And uh, thanks to everybody once again for all of the support. I really appreciate it so much. You don't even know. Have a good day.